Welcome to Cars in Korea. I introduce newly released Genesis, Hyundai, and Kia cars. And the car I have behind me today is Kia Sportage. I absolutely love what Kia and Hyundai is doing recently with the color options on cars, the matte color. My personal favorite, honestly, is the gravity gold matte thus far. I think it's safe to assume and say that Gia may be introducing those colors in the near future as well. Shadow gray matte. I think it's one of the best fitting names that you can come up with such color. Gray, shadow, and matte. <laughs> Just from that three words alone, you can already come up with and you already have a good picture of a color in your mind. I have plenty of Gia, you know, driving center nearby me, but this was the closest one that they had uh, the, this color, the shadow gray matte. But this is all worth it. Just pay close attention to what the car, the color has to offer you. Gia Sportage has gotten much bigger than its predecessor because it shares the same platform that's been used on Tucson and also the latest Santa Fe which Hyundai emphasized big time that they have increased the legroom space due to a brand new chassis. If you have seen my video and review on Tucson, the new Tucson, I've mentioned this already. The wheelbase on this Sportage is 2,755 millimeters, exactly and identical to that of Tucson. But if you come to the back, this Sportage has three centimeters that is 30 millimeters longer on the back and that is precisely 30 millimeters and that space has been contributed to longer three centimeters longer trunk compartment as you can see this is matte finished it's not gloss i keep going back to this santa fe but just look at that you see that b-pillar right there it's gloss finish high gloss and also you know abundantly found on the c-pillar and so on however look at this gear sportage the c-pillar matte finished matte finished it's just um you know it's just the typical plastic kind of a feel but then if you come down to the cladding this cladding as well as throughout the trunk and the back there is also that side skirts so carry it over to the front the cladding is finished in high gloss and the funny thing is this is exactly the opposite if you go down a trim so on a lower trim you'll see the cladding finished in plastic and once again just like this santa fe the cladding here would be a plastic like that one so lower trim this cladding will be plastic however if you come up front the pillars here and here would be a gloss finished black like that on my way here there was a little bit of a puddle so i stepped on the water and immediately it splashes on the car but the side skirts on all suv nowadays uh, Hyundai and Gia cars of course are integrated into the door like that so the inside where your you know legs and shirts excuse me a pants and jeans touch is kept clean 24 7. I mean it still has good enough of clearance but watch out when you're opening up a door because because of that much of a side skirt portion that's been embedded on the doors you now have a little relatively lower clearance from the ground and let's also get into these wheels which is wrapped around in 235 55 19 all around a square setup yes it is look at the center wheel cap so where the bolts are it's actually covered up by this plastic but still finished in high gloss and also love this silver point on the face of the spokes i can't really even come up with a name for this pattern but this windmill like like uh it has how many one two three four five a traditional good old five spokes because five spoke wheels never get old and well just because i have santa fe right behind me that is kind of a design that we see nowadays a lot on hyundai car 
but this is what we see recently on a lot of Ghia. And not to mention about Hyundai's black and silver tone, also evidently found on that one. This car, the test driver I have in front of me, has loaded option. And that is not just the exterior, that is not just the interior, but this car is equipped with all-wheel drive. This long wheelbase is nothing but a gain because you will be getting crazy legroom. Just look at that. Look at how spacious it is on the front. To the back, not moving the chair, but just look at that. That is also a crazy, a madness legroom that Kia has provided for us. And there's a little bit of a pouch on the second row seat, so it kind of, you know, eats up away the legroom, but you know, this is just the empty pouch. But let me come back to this front design. This by far is the most upgrade that Sportage has gotten thus far, I think. Just look at this DRL positioned that way and going that way. This honestly reminds me of one of those emoji. And I think it's really a good fit to this um, Kia Sportage. It makes the center look more focused because I mean, those arrows are, you know, pointing in towards the middle. And also check out this new Kia emblem. Uh, for your information, Kia Motors or whatever it was, whatever the name was, they no longer use that name. Now Kia is Kia of its own. It's not Kia Cars or Kia Motors. They have to completely changed the name into Kia because um, Kia is now pursuing to be a mobility company per se. This matte color brings out the most out of the accents that's been applied on Kia Sportage, starting with the silver point and also right here. And this is this reminds me of that I have seen on Veloster N. And there is a uh, headlight as well as this is the turn signal, full LED. Let me show it to you. Comes up together on the mirror, hooked up to the front. What do you guys think about that LED? Um, a lot of owners actually do like that. And it's my first time seeing it, of course, but I like that as well. So this is kind of uh, what it looks like from the front and also let me give you one from the back so I can give you this kind of a bird eye view but just look at the rear end it also has that coupe feeling a lot of uh, sporty SUVs seem to be pursuing nowadays and also we've seen that guess what EV6 I mean, it's not as aggressive as it looked like on EV6. And of course, due to the nature being, you know, the EGMP platform built EV car versus a uh, ICE internal combustion engine. But I just love this design that they have implemented on Gia Sportage, a coupe like, and also check out this rising belt line, the silver line that runs throughout the car on the profile. So this belt line, at the, uh, towards the end, towards the rear fender, it rises up very quickly like that. And just look how narrow two points come together towards the end. And thanks to this matte color, you see the reflection right there of the sunlight? It's showing us that character and the boldness. This kind of a over fender looking like design portion towards the back. I mean, of course, it's not an over fender, but this reminds me of those. So on the back, it has that Gia family design language abundantly. Some of you guys are going to argue with me on this one, but I gotta say, this little piece of design sticking out from the taillight, this always reminds me of Stinger. As I have mentioned earlier, let me show you. So the rear cam looks like an LED light. Better be, all the cars lately are LEDs. There is the trunk button and there is the muffler is all hidden. So it doesn't stick out, but it's hidden like that. And just, um, you know, nothing significant. Let's open up the rear trunk. And this, again, is three 
centimeters or 30 millimeters wider than its identical, it's a twin brother, Tucson. Lift up this compartment. You have a little bit of extra storage right here and you can lower the rear seat just like that. A lever right there. Oh, my bag. You see how the seat you know, is moving back and forth? So when the second row seats are folded and pushed down, this um, rear portion of the seat goes down a little bit as well. And uh, it, gets, it gets locked when you push it all the way down. Space you get with the seats completely folded on the second row. And let me hop in the second row seat and just look at the material. This here is leather probably not a natural leather but a synthetic one but still a leather uh, not a napa but looks you know good quality enough given its class and uh, this suede finished so it's a two-tone all throughout seen on the upper portion of the seat and also on the headrest as well even for the middle one and i did not move a thing for the front seat you know this is how i drive usually so i have the seat that way but and also look at this um a hanger like you this literally is a hanger you can hang your coat or you know outers right here and also there is a little bit of a hook for probably your purse there's a uh, this pouch that you can store your stuff in don't know why but it's here probably serves even better for like a, a knee pad not even a knee pad maybe shin pad but i just like how that gear is written there the brand new design has usbs on the rear to both sides so kids on the back don't have to fight for it and this tilt going back and forth is for the passenger seat depending on some cars you know ionic 5 the buttons here move the second row seat instead of the passenger seat so i would have to i just double check on that i have one more thing again spacious super spacious oh i can definitely feel the seat the seat is like dropping when i fold the seat forward like i did when i was folding the seat and there are a various levels of adjustments that you can do with the seat and this is all the way back and super cozy and just like how it was on tucson this crazy panoramic sunroof provides a nice view for the second row seat and as for the sunroof again it doesn't open all the way but up to right there and that's all we get of course there is a tilt as well this cloth covers up relatively quick this is unique i don't i've never seen this design ever anywhere else before and also there is this high gloss finish adding on to the design nothing too special on the rear seat you know heated seat power window on the second row seat as well the center arm console on the second row seat have a nice uh, regular size cup holders definitely unique on this Kia sportage is this pouch I wonder what the name that I have come up with this and a little nice pocket too for you to store this and that you cannot adjust the temperature from the back but there is AC on the back as well so let's hop into the first row all right now I am in the driver's seat of Kia Sportage of course same handle but immediately different is look at this vent design oh my god another unique vent that i've never seen before is also carried out to the passenger seat as well first seen on gia k8 they have integrated all buttons here with the ac as well as the navigation here uh, it has a little bit of a dull matte finish kind of a feeling all throughout but once you get used to this functions and this um you know infotainment system right here it's super super easy direct intuitive and most importantly it's super super clean and this is 12.3 inch dual screen left 
and right that provides all the necessary information that you need you know direct and self-explanatory just the same Hyundai slash Kia UI you will have no problem you know using this once you get used to it the glove box and center on console and I want to mention this one a cup holder but look how Kia has gotten creative with this cup holder right here just look at that <laughs> push this button right here it will give you a smaller cup holder size and uh, when you want to make it to the original size simply just you know push it back and then it's going to lock I have a feeling your kids on the passenger seat is going to play a lot with this one just like how Tucson was all throughout their center console and whatnot here is finished in high gloss black so you can see you know dust and scratches and fingerprints easily however when this is clean you know it really definitely adds on to that sleek design so the buttons itself is self-explanatory just twist it around for different drive modes you see there's the buttons for the parking you can see the parking cam like that surround view provided and auto hold and when you go down slope heat and ventilated seats for both sides and push it and lock for phone charge USB ports and 12 volts and when closed just look at that it's super clean and this if i'm not wrong is nearly identical or feels the same to that of a ev6 this design the way it's been laid out that is super close and i think this is what gia is pursuing definitely with their um, suvs and this center arm is just positioned at the right perfect height so you can rest your arm like that hence the name armrest you get good clear views from the mirrors and not too bad the rear view mirror and another thing is that you can feel and notice that how big this sportage has gotten and let me tell you more about it on my way back i'm driving i have the rear trunk open but i can close it from the driver's seat just like that yeah gotta love that and as always put the car in sports mode to show you different animations here i always test drive my cars in sport mode all right let's uh head back out you see when driving i can definitely feel that this car has gotten much bigger and definitely provides much higher you know point of view but yes oh that's the previous one Kia Sportage R named here in Korea and wow this car is definitely bigger when driving and again I am driving 1.6 turbo all-wheel drive And I hear a strong and rough engine note on sport mode when you floor it. And there is, it's equipped with um, this camera. Helps you aid, you know, watch out for any possible, God forbid, but any possible, you know, accidents. And let me floor the car here. So you guys hear the engine? So it sounds pretty rough and quite loud when you actually floor this car in sport mode. And also as for the brakes, um, you can definitely push it all the way in and I feel it's quite squeezy and also it's really soft. Um, so you would have to press quite a lot for a strong feedback, you know, in order for you to put the car into a halt, but again, the focus of this car is definitely geared more towards being a comfortable, good city driver. So I think it's a well fit and suit. Not much of a stress on your foot, applying brakes and accelerator or gas pedal, you know, every now and then. And uh, 
it also is equipped with the HDA right here and uh, didn't recognize the lanes yet but push that on you have the LKA lane keeping assist as well as um, steering assist and uh, so gentle easy on the turns and the feedback that I am getting from the steering wheel it's quite direct and it's super smooth as well you know unlike the old versions where it was just uh, you know lost in directions like it was always hunting for the center of the lanes and it will you know make adjustments every single second but it's not the case with this latest HDA it keeps the car in the center it goes and you know it provides me a very smooth gentle drive it's beautifully done beautifully done it comes to a stop of its own I did not interfere whatsoever you know keeps the distance all right goes back and forth and just this giant screen that 12.3 inch screen left and right it gives you a crazy amount of information that you need here and there it's a very good very very good city driver so comfortable and as for the noise I don't really get that much of a noise coming in to the cabin you know it's super it's, it's good I don't know if it's a dual pressed but I won't be surprised if it is